Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll be walking through how to build games on Reddit using Devit, Reddit's developer platform. With Devit, you can build apps and games using standard web frameworks or export for web from common game engines and run them directly on reddit.com and in the Reddit mobile apps. Today, we'll walk through how you can get started building your first game on Devit and how to leverage AI to build games quickly. With that, let's get started by going to developers.reddit.com new. This brings us to the project setup wizard, which allows us to quickly create our first project. You can see that there are several templates to choose from depending on which frameworks you'd like to use. And we're always adding new templates. So if there's any frameworks that you'd like to see added, uh, just let us know in the comments below. For this project, I'll go ahead and select React, but feel free to choose another. You can follow along just the same. We'll then go ahead and select a name for our app. Um, I will call this one AI Color Catcher. And then you need to verify that you are, in fact, a human to be able to build dev apps currently, although we are going to use AI heavily in this video. So a little bit of both. And then next up, we can uh, connect the dev command line interface to our profile. This basically allows it to run some of the commands to upload the build on our behalf, and we can easily play test and iterate. Once you go through that step, you're all set. So this will bring you to um, a couple of commands that we need to enter into the terminal or command window. So you can just go ahead and open that up and we'll copy it over and paste it. This will copy that template into your current folder. It'll create a new folder for you as well. And once it's done, you can see there are steps here, the same steps as you see on the site. Basically, we just need to navigate into that folder and then run npm run dev, which will create your test community and then set up a play testing session. So you can continue to iterate from there. And I see we're almost done and there we go. All right, so this created a link. This link here is for our new test subreddit. So if we copy that and we go to it, we can see that our app is installed there and this is where we're gonna do all of our iteration on our app. We're gonna continue to build out the game there and then we can install it on other subreddits as well. But for now, we can see we can scroll down on our subreddit. We have one post, which is our app. It says launch app on there. So if we click that, um, this is the template project that we downloaded. So we can see here there is a plus a minus. It's a little counter um, counter app that basically just stores the last value in it. So if we exit out and we go back to it, we can see that the last value is stored there. Nothing super, super interesting, but we are going to change that. And we will do that by editing the app.tsx as they suggest right there. One more thing I did want to note is that at the top, the UI simulator is there as well. And this is, allows you to view the app in both a mobile view and a desktop view. So this is really important. Again, when you're building your game, it is deployed to both reddit.com as well as the Reddit mobile apps. So people will play this on their computers. They will play this on their phones. We want to make sure that it looks really good um, wherever your players are finding your game. So with that, let's go ahead and open up Cursor. If you don't have Cursor installed yet, you can install that from the Cursor website. But once you do have the project open, you will notice that in the bottom left, there is a new MCP server detected. Um, go ahead and enable that. All of our template projects are set up out of the box to work really well with Cursor. It is all within this MCP JSON file, which basically helps Cursor know how to look through the debit docs and some other information. So it can be a lot more contextually aware. So if we remember, we need to edit that app.tsx, which is located in the client folder. This is pretty much that entire view that we saw. So this has the counters there. It has got all the information. Um, it has that snoo, snoo icon. So let's go ahead and give it a prompt. And let's, let's change our app. So for me, I'm going to make a, an app that lets users sort colors into buckets. And we'll have three buckets at the bottom. And then basically allow the user to drag the following colors into those buckets. I'll speed up the typing here so you don't have to watch me um, work through this. Also, another thing that I like to add to my prompts is to make sure that it thinks about the aspect ratio. Again, users will play this on mobile and on desktop. So adding a little extra note that says make sure that you align this correctly with the screen size and when the screen size changes, that can go a long way to making sure that your apps look really good across platform. I'm also going to open up the terminal just so we can kind of see where the status of things are at as cursor runs and does its thing. I fast forward this part a little bit just so um, we don't have to wait for, for cursor to think through everything. All right, and it looks like it is now updating the app.tsx file, which is super helpful because that is the one that we needed to edit um, as told to us by the template. 
it now runs npm run dev for us, which will do the full process of updating our app and uploading it to our subreddit. So we can go ahead and click the link that it provides, and this will bring us back to our subreddit. And in here, we can go ahead and click launch app. We can see what cursor built for us. So we have a nice little description of the game. Let's click start game. All right, we got falling colors. Red can go over there. Looks like it's, you need to drag it maybe into the bucket. Yeah, into the bucket. So red into the bucket. I missed blue. Okay, we got final score of 10. Pretty good, pretty good. Let's see if I can beat it. All right, green into green, red into red, red into red, red, okay, blue, maybe blue into blue. Let's see how this looks on desktop as well. So we can change that UI simulator. Okay, yeah, it does scale really well. So that additional prompt of making sure that it expands to different screen sizes did work out. Um, and so this is all well and good. We have a score, we have some lives. But let's make it a little bit more reddity. So we want our users to compete against each other. So they keep coming back. So back in cursor, um, let's compliment cursor on its job well done. And then let's have it add a daily leaderboard so that users will keep coming back. So I'll let cursor work on that. And while cursor does that, let's go ahead and take a look at the server folder that was also provided as part of this template. So if we go ahead and open the index.ts file, we can see there's a bunch of already provided code here. This was provided through the template, not through cursor, but cursor is gonna update it now. Um, we can also see that Redis is included here. This is the storage method that is used for apps and games on Reddit. Um, so uh, if you think back to that initial template where it had that plus and minus and you'd leave the app and go back to it, it would maintain that score that was all stored through Redis. There's examples of how to do that in here. But overall, the main takeaway that I want you to get from this file is that this is pretty much the bridge between your game and all of the Reddit services. So your, your game will communicate, like if you have external fetch requests you need to make, those will get sent here and then they will be forwarded on from here. And so I wanted to call it out here because some methods will go, some methods and functionality will go within the server folder and some will go within your client folder. So if you're unsure what goes where, be sure to check out our documentation at developers.reddit.com slash docs. And everything is split up into a client folder and a server folder. Um, but with that, it looks like cursor is just wrapping up. So let's open up the link and see if it added the leaderboard. You can also just return to the previous page you were on before. Um, I'll just refresh this and we can launch the app again. So now that's open, we can see that, oh, there is a leaderboard at the top. So it looks like that did work. There are no scores yet. So let's see if we can get a score up there and see if it works. All right, green was way too fast for me. Blue, no, red. All right, red into red. All right, high score of 10. Good, good enough. Let's see if it works. So view the leaderboard, there I am. There's my username as I requested. And um, there is my score. So if I play again, let's see if I can get a better score than 10 this time. Oh, there we go, 20, new high score, perfect. View leaderboard, and there I am again. So it is during the scores, you can update this as you need for your game, and really just work with cursor to build that out. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover from the cursor standpoint today. If we quickly just jump over to our documentation site, again, this is developers.reddit.com slash docs. You can see that we have a whole page here on AI tools. So this explains the cursor process that we just went through. It also um, has a workflow for, for other uh, AI tools as well. So if you wanted to use a different one, it's probably covered here. And if not, let us know if you get stuck. Also at the bottom left of the navigation bar, you can see that we do have a Discord link. You can join our developer Discord. This is where you can ask us questions directly, communicate with other devs and see what everyone is building. You can also join r slash devit, which is our subreddit for devit, if you prefer to communicate on Reddit. With that, thank you so much for watching, and we can't wait to see what you create.